and Kelly and welcome to Kapowski Reads. I had absolutely no plans this weekend which was the first time in so long that I've had zero plans and I'm not feeling 100% well as you can tell by my kind of croaky throat and my herbal tea that I have on my bookshelf so I'm just having a really lazy weekend so all I have done for the last 24 hours is read, sleep, because I can't stay up for a full 24 hours. I get tired and go for walks. Aberdeen is full of so many lovely places to go for nature walks. So that is what I have done with my day. Maybe quite boring, but I've had a great time. So I'm gonna share the books that I've read and maybe a little b-roll of my walk because it looked gorgeous. So I'm going to share that with you and hope you enjoy. So the first book that I finished, and I have to differentiate it as finishing because I didn't start it during this 24 hour period and it would be unfair to pretend that I did. So I finished Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Abertali. And this was a book that I had borrowed from my lovely friend. I had about 150 pages left of this book because I had just been reading it during my lunch break. And while I do read quite a lot, I cannot get through a 350-ish page book in half hour lunch break spells in the space of a week. So I finished it in the weekend. This is the third book in the Love, Simon series, which Shamefully, I haven't read the first two, but I have seen the film and I know that's awful to say as a book lover that I'm jumping in to book three after only seeing the film, but my friend offered to loan me book three. I'm not going to look a book gift in the mouth. That's not a phrase. I, I didn't, I did want to read this. It sounded really good and I have heard that it works as a standalone and, and I feel like it did. I did feel like I was quite familiar with some of the characters or all of the characters really. And this book is all about Leah who is 17, 18 in her final year of high school. She's bisexual and is sort of struggling with her sexual identity. And I thought that this was quite a, quite a sweet sort of coming of age book. I love the side characters in this book more than the main character. I didn't really like Leah but I loved Abby, I loved Simon, and I honestly think that having seen the film probably helped me to not get confused with the sheer volume of characters in this book. I think that if I had just read the book I might have gotten a little bit confused. Maybe not. But I would like to read the first two books now that I've read the third. There were some moments where I sort of thought, I'm, I'm too old for this, but that's sort of the risk that you take or I feel the risk that I take as a mid 30 year old woman reading young adult. That book's not made for me so there are points where I might think it's a bit young but it's not that the book's a bit young it's just that I'm a little bit old and that's totally okay because the book's not made with me in mind so I'm not going to mark the book down because of that. It was a pretty quick read, it was quite enjoyable story, some lovely little romantic scenes and it was a little bit heartwarming. Uh, if you want a lovable main character, she's not, I didn't find her that lovable. <laughs> she seemed quite mean and yeah. <laughs> I then read A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson and this was an arc that I managed to get from NetGalley. I saw so many people read this last year I want to say I saw them read it in October but that could be because the book is about vampires and I'm just thinking that's an October thing. So this book is basically a reimagining of Dracula through the eyes of his bride and I love Dracula. Dracula is very possibly my favourite classic I think. I would really have to put a lot of thought into that but I'm fairly certain that my favourite classics are definitely Dracula and Carmilla. I love vampires, I love gothic tales. So for me this book just 
utterly just grabbed my interest because it is a gothic story about vampires but it's told from the point of view of his bride and what did I think was missing from Dracula? More female representation. <laughs> the book started with Dracula saving Costanta as he then named her who was dying and back in the 14th century, 15th century. I can't quite remember if it was 1400 and blah blah or if it was 14th century so let's just put a little question mark next to the date that it started with and he ended up saving her as she was dying and takes her as his bride and then the book just follows it spans centuries it goes right up to the 20th century and all the while it's told from the point of view of Costanta who is just sort of documenting the change in the way that she felt towards Dracula who was originally seen as like her sort of saviour he he brought her back from almost death and then she sort of notices all of these things of perhaps he is not quite the loving husband that she thought he was and he's got so many secrets that he kept from her and oh I just loved it and I really enjoyed the the character so obviously we had Costanta and Dracula doesn't even really get named so it's just implied that he's Dracula. There are some fun callbacks to the Harkers which I absolutely as a Dracula fan loved but the book is all about Costanta and her relationship with Dracula but also with their their found family. So as they live for so long they bring other people into their marriage in the way that that sounds. <laughs> I found the writing of this book to just be absolutely just beautiful. It was very poetic and that is something that I just love in a book because I just I devoured it and it was split into three sections so sort of Costanta becoming a vampire, being used to being a vampire and then their family growing, the world changing and then the end where she has some very tough decisions to make and I just I loved loved everything about this book. I could not fault it at all. I don't want to fault books but I thought it was absolutely perfection. It was a wonderful gothic homage to Dracula but from a point of view that I feel has not really been done and Although if you have any recommendations for books similar to this, please let me know because I would love to read nothing but them. I utterly, utterly adored this book and now I want to reread Dracula and Carmilla but I like to do that in October and I feel it's too far too early in the year for me to do that. In addition to this being a beautifully poetic gothic story, it was told it felt like it was told basically through a memoir of Costanta who's just remembering bygone days and I, I really enjoyed that element of the book. It was just, it felt so, despite being a retelling of a well-known, well-loved, especially for me, story, it just felt so fresh and I, I absolutely loved it. And I want to go and read everything that this author has written. So I'm going to have to do that. I then read Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield, which I bought back in March and meant to read almost straight away because it sounded amazing. And then I didn't, but I have now read it. And I'm so annoyed at myself for not reading it back then because this book was amazing. This book is a dual narrative from the points of view of Mary and Leah who are married and Leah has been under the sea in a deep sea sort of expedition not in a mermaid way but she returns and just isn't the same person that she was when she left and this book tells basically it just tells the story of Leah returning and Mary kind of trying to cope with the person that she loved returning differently and knowing that something has happened that she is not privy to and kind of trying to work out how to support the woman that she loves while not really knowing what happened. 
I just found myself, when I was reading this, I just wanted to know what happened? What happened under the sea? And, well, something's definitely not right. Something's definitely up with Leah. And I was just so absolutely hooked straight away. And I just, I couldn't put the book down. I just really wanted to know what was happening. I did feel, there were some points of this where it felt almost sort of claustrophobic because Leah is under the sea in a submarine and submarines famously quite cramped. So there were a lot of chapters that were taking place in a very claustrophobic atmosphere. So definitely not a book to read without a window at the very least so that you can remind yourself that you're not trapped. Um, this was the second book that I read recently that features uh, deep sea missions and people not being quite okay and this was by far my favourite book about that and I know it kind of feels strange that I read a few books about people under the sea <laughs> but here we are. I thought it was absolutely hauntingly beautiful. The writing again spectacular and it was just so chilling to read about because I don't know about you but the sea kind of freaks me out a little bit because well we don't know what's in there and that's a little bit scary perhaps I've seen far too many sci-fi films about the sea but I think I have a, a healthy not fear I'm not scared of the sea but I do, I do love reading books that are about things that are in the sea and it gives me the, the chills and that's what this book did. It just, it made me think, it made me get a little bit creeped out, but in a good way. And I did not see the twists coming. They just took me by surprise. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. So in my 24 hours, I got through two full books and like a third of another book. So I'm very pleased with that. The books that I did finish weren't overly long. They were only maybe 200 or so pages. I think that's pretty, yeah, so that feels like that's a pretty good amount to get through in a day. If you've read any of these books, please let me know how you got on with them. I had a great time. I hope you did too. And if you've read anything excellent recently, please let me know because I'm nosy. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye!